Imagine a world without Lyme disease. What if you didn't have to worry every time you found a tick crawling on your leg? That world may be closer than you think. New tools for gene editing have opened up the possibility of creating animals that may be genetically resistant to disease. So the, the mosquito people are way ahead of us. They uh, uh, have been using genetically modified mosquitoes to try to uh, complement and in fact replace the old methods of vector control, of cleaning up and spraying and things like that, uh, to try to reduce the risk of dengue, uh, chikungunya, or Zika virus transmission in communities. They've done releases in communities and showed tremendous effect on, on transmission uh, of these viruses. Uh, the trials are still ongoing. But the idea is, you know, yes, uh, the, my old uh, PhD advisor, the late Andy Spielman, would, would just rail against the stupid idea of using genetically modified mosquitoes to do things that uh, a per, a regular vector control could do. Uh, and yes, vector control, when done correctly, could be effective, but the, the proponents of the new methods have it absolutely right. We've been doing this now for 100 years and we have these problems continue to grow uh, in magnitude in terms of public health burden. We need to try new things. There are all these wonderful new technologies out there. We need to apply them to add to our quiver of arrows things that we can use it to, to, to reduce public health burden of vector-borne diseases. Lyme disease has been steadily increasing in the United States since it was first discovered. This is despite major advances in our understandings of the disease improvements in education, and implementation of different prevention strategies. One issue is that many of the approaches to prevention require people to actively change their behaviors, something that is difficult to maintain over time. Using a genetically resistant animal has the advantage that it requires little individual action to prevent Lyme disease. It's the same mechanism of action of uh, what we hope to do with genetically modifying white-footed mice, which are one of the main uh, sources of the infection in many sites in the northeastern U.S. Uh, if we can find a way to reduce their capacity to infect ticks, then we might reduce the number of ticks that are infected that people might encounter. And the idea is to have the mice express a from birth antibody uh, uh, against OSPE. So you clone in uh, uh, a, a gene for and the, F, the, the antibodies that uh, are effective against OSPE and have them express, over-express it uh, from birth and then release these mice into nature. Hopefully uh, the idea is that the, the, the modification can be passed on to progeny. Uh, and so you release a bunch of mice and hope that they interbreed with local mice uh, and that a good proportion of the next generation of the mice will carry this gene and overexpress this antibody from birth and therefore you'll have fewer and fewer mice out there that are capable of, of infecting ticks. Borrelia burgdorferi outer surface protein A is a protein that's been shown to be very effective at preventing Lyme disease in mice, dogs, and humans when used as a vaccine. It works by creating antibodies that are taken up by the tick as it feeds, killing the bacteria inside the tick. Dr. Kevin Esfelt of the MIT Media Lab is creating mice that Dr. Telford will put out on his test sites. Initially, these mice will have the genes for the OSP-A antibody spliced into their chromosome. However, normal splicing results in the quick loss of the gene as the animal breeds with wild animals. After the initial testing for safety in traditionally altered mice, Dr. Esfeld hopes to put the gene for the OSPE antibody onto what he calls a gene drive. When genetic material is placed on a gene drive, it is able to copy itself so that it is not diluted over the generations. In this slide, the red flies contain the genetic insertion. With a normal inheritance pattern, the mutation is quickly lost. When the insertion is placed on the gene drive, Normal inheritance is bypassed, and all progeny contain the insertion, even though they are breeding with wild animals, not containing the insertion. There, there is an economic argument for, for interventions at the level of the reservoir vector. That is, if you can uh, alter them so that they're less competent in infecting ticks uh, and have that heritable, 
uh, then yes, there's a big investment up front, but then the maintenance phase is, is far less expensive than doing it as you would human vaccination every year or every two years. Lyme disease costs the U.S. economy over $1.3 billion per year in direct health care costs and up to $5 billion in ancillary costs. Eliminating Lyme disease in the wild would save money on both direct and indirect costs in ways that even a human vaccine cannot. But it is just the beginning. This is proof of concept. I mean, we hope to, to use a well-studied system to make an impact locally and then use those, use that lesson to try to extend this to other places in the world.